So in this issue of PES Win Magazine, a good article, and we don't talk about this a lot, but I'm interested in wave energy. And you don't see a lot of, of deep articles about how to use wave energy. I, I know there's some really good designs that have been out there, but putting them in the field and getting something tested, that's a, a different story. And I think there's been a lot of uh, uh, worry about wave energy, how durable it's going to be and those kind of things. But uh, as we move offshore, particularly for floating wind, I think wave energy is a possibility. And I think there's some unique uh, uh, opportunities at the moment to do something. And there's a Polish design firm called uh, WuproHyde, W-U-P-R-O-H-Y-D, that is working on uh, a innovative wave turbine technology to take power out of the ocean waves. And they're, what they're describing in the magazine is sort of a three-part system, an energy island, so to speak, of wind, floating wind, with solar on these platforms, and on the top of the platform is solar. On the bottom of the platform is a wave energy uh, system, such that they can maximize the output of these energy islands. And if they give some numbers here, but basically what they're saying is somewhere between 21 and 34 megawatts could be generated by the system in the North Sea per module. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot of power generation without a lot of uh, more complexity. Obviously, there's some here. You're building this little platform for these solar panels and wave generators to sit in, but it looks fairly straightforward. And my question to everybody here is, why haven't we seen more combos of solar, wind, wave, wind, wave, solar? being thought of or, or trialed right now. So last year, Alan, exactly what this article is about. I sat in a panel at OTC, the Offshore Technology Conference, mainly focused on oil and gas, but they had some renewable energy technologies in, which was great. Uh, but one of the panelists, actually the lead panelist, was talking about uh, designs for this exact same thing. Like, we, hey, we're going to, if you have offshore floating wind or offshore fixed bottom wind, you already have the infrastructure in place. The cables are ran, the exp like everything's there. Why not add more generation to it? The other side of that too is if you put in the wave uh, generators for power, now you're creating power at night, uh, during the day, during different weather patterns, all kinds of different stuff, right? So you're you're optimizing the time, the you know the uptime of uh, that generating asset. So it just makes sense. And I mean, all of us have been to the beach. All of us have been to the ocean. Like the waves are always rolling. Even when the, there's a light breeze, there's always waves moving. Um, this and uh, there's actually quite a couple of, there's a couple of other concepts out there that are taking advantage of tidal uh, currents. Because again, like that's something you could set your clock by when tidal currents move. So that, that resource is always going to be there. So I think that this is uh, something that should be explored a little bit more. The tough thing I think that you're going to hear from uh, people in the industry is the operations and maintenance on it, right? That's a, something we've got to make sure that we can sort out. So if you haven't received your copy of PES Wind, the latest issue, you can download it at PESWind.com. A lot of great articles in this issue, a lot to catch up on. So check it out at PESWind.com. As wind energy professionals, staying informed is crucial and let's face it, difficult. That's why the Uptime Podcast recommends PES Wind Magazine. PES Wind offers a diverse range of in-depth articles and expert insights that dive into the most pressing issues facing our energy future. Whether you're an industry veteran or new to wind, PES Wind has the high quality content you need. Don't miss out. Visit PESWind.com today.